In this episode we are going to build a Bluetooth speaker amplifier based on the TDA7492P Class D audio amplifier coupled with a Bluetooth 4 module. We're not actually going to build the whole amplifier module because we can get that from China very affordable. It looks like this and it only costs around $12 shipped and you can even get it under $10 uh, when there is uh, some kind of sale which is way less than it would cost us to buy the uh, Bluetooth module and the TDA7492P individually, not to mention the cost of fabricating uh, an entire PCB of this size. So we are actually going to use this module and build the final product with a nice enclosure and a suitable external power supply. Let's start by taking a closer look at the module. On the left side we see the Bluetooth module, this is the CSR8635 chipset, uh, it's Bluetooth 4.1 with lots of interesting features and you can read more about it on the CSR website. This module alone costs something around $5 on eBay. Next we see an audio line input through this 3.5mm uh, jack, I'm almost certain the uh, switch on this connector is used to switch between the audio coming from the Bluetooth module and the uh, audio coming from the exterior when the connector is plugged in. We also have a, a small amplifier to boost the signal. It's an NE5532 dual low noise operational amplifier. We also see what looks like uh, a couple of uh, small voltage regulators in SOT89 package. I like the uh, SOT89 package because it's small but also provides decent power dissipation capability for its size. It's probably a 5 volt regulator one and uh, maybe the second one is a 3.3 volt one or it's, it's just um, a MOSFET and uh, they're used to supply power most likely to the uh, Bluetooth module. The audio signal is then routed to the main amplifier chip which is the TDA7492P Class D amplifier. It has dual 25 watts output and it's made by ST Microelectronics. You might be wondering how is it possible to get that much power from this small package which has so little area for heat dissipation. Well, this is a Class D amplifier, making it very efficient at the expense of uh, lower audio quality. But if you're not a true audiophile, this might be just fine for your ears. The chip also comes in a special package with an exposed pad on the bottom. That pad is soldered to the PCB and helps with the heat dissipation. Is this a genuine chip? I would say yes. I don't think the Chinese foundries would forge something like this unless someone in the audience has uh, any info on this happening. Around this uh, chip we have some supporting passives. These big 330 microfarads electrolytic capacitors are all tied in parallel and are placed close to the chip to provide some bulk energy storage for when the chip needs it. This could be upgraded to 470 microfarads each while fitting in the same 10mm base size just the height would be increased by 2 or 3 millimeters. Since the output of a Class D amplifier is a switching PWM signal, we need some filtering and that is accomplished with these uh, low pass filters that we see on the output and they're formed by uh, these big 32, 33 micro Henry's inductors and some capacitors which we see right next to the inductors. The 33 micro Henry's inductors are recommended for a an 8 ohm speaker load, but if you're using a different speaker like uh, 4 ohm, you might want to adjust these values to 15 micro Henry's. Also, the values of the capacitors would need to be adjusted. But all of this is described in the datasheet, and I'm sure you're going to read that if you're going to design your own circuit. We also have this uh, small dip chip on the board. And uh, depending on how you switch these, you get four different levels of gain from 21 dB up to 33 dB and you can read more about this on page 19 of the datasheet. DC power comes in through this uh, 2.1 mm jack and goes through this uh, MOSFET which uh, uh, is controlled by this on off switch. I'm guessing they didn't use the switch itself to uh, as a main switch because maybe it's not rated for the current. 
that could be the reason. We also have these uh, tactile switches which are connected to the uh, Bluetooth module and they are used to send some commands to your audio player through Bluetooth commands like uh, play, pause, skip and volume. Let's also take a quick look on, on the back of this PCB and the first thing I noticed they used a split ground system uh, or a star ground system which uh, converges on this point right under the DC jack. So that's good design practice for minimizing noise on the power rails. Here are the uh, vias right under the exposed pad of the TDA7492P. These vias will conduct heat like some miniature heat pipes from the chip package into the uh, PCB copper layer which acts like a heatsink. Myself, I would have used a full copper fill to get more copper instead of this uh, hatch style uh, fill which they used and this reduces the amount and surface of the copper. I don't think they've used any solder paste for the exposed pad because these are some big vias and solder should have flowed through these holes and be visible on the bottom side. Maybe I will flow some solder into these later just to improve the thermal transfer. So that's about all uh, that we notice on a first look on this uh, PCB module. This is the aluminum enclosure that I want to use for this project together with uh, this connector for, this, uh, for the output to the uh, speakers. This uh, panel mount 2.5mm in this case uh, jack for DC power but you can also use it 2.1mm it's just what I had available in my uh, bin of connectors and I uh, also want to use this 3.5mm uh, jack for the line in and this uh, mini rocker switch for the on off control of the amplifier. I'm going to need to do some mods on this PCB to make it uh, fit nicely into our enclosure. First I'm going to remove these uh, plastic feet because we don't need them. I want the PCB to actually lay flat on the uh, inside of the aluminum enclosure just to dissipate some of the heat through the uh, enclosure. I will of course use some insulating silicone thermal pad to avoid shorting any of the pads from the PCB to the aluminum enclosure. Next I am desoldering this uh, DC jack because power will come through an external panel mount 2.1mm jack so I will run some wires to these pads. I am also removing the 3.5mm input jack because I want to have that exposed to an external panel mount 3.5mm socket for supplying an external line signal if in the case that I don't want to use the uh, Bluetooth. I will also have to run wires to these pads preferably through some shielded cable. The output screw terminals are too big and uh, not really needed so those are coming off as well and I will solder wires from the pads to the output speaker terminals. I would also like to have an external indication of the status of this board so I'm going to run a set of very thin wires from the input power LED to an external 3mm LED and you could do the same with the Bluetooth status LED but I noticed the module is pretty reliable so I don't need that indication on the panel. Just a power indicator will suffice. And the last thing I removed from this board is the power switch that we're also going to be replacing with a panel mount 1 connected through wires to the PCB. At this point you could also run some wires from these switches to a new panel of switches mounted on the enclosure. So you can access these uh, commands later. But I decided I don't need this feature so I'm not going to do it. One thing I'm concerned with this enclosure is the Bluetooth signal strength. Remember this is an aluminum enclosure and might block our Bluetooth signal entirely. Even the end caps are metal um, though on one end I'm going to use this um, plastic uh, output speaker terminal so the signal might pass through here. If uh, needed I will replace the remaining end cap with a plastic core PCB fiberglass one. For the output terminals I decided to use this style of connector because I had this available in my box of connectors and it's really easy to use. But there are other alternatives you could uh, use for example uh, some panel mount RCA connectors like these. 
or you can use these uh, plug-in screw terminals. These are 5mm pitch ones. For mounting my output connector block I decided to use these uh, brass standoffs and I'm attaching these to the inside of the enclosure with some epoxy then a couple of 3mm uh, screws will secure the connector block to these uh, standoffs that will, will be stuck to the inside of the enclosure. For securing the actual PCB inside the enclosure I don't have that many options. The PCB is smaller than the offered uh, mounting grooves inside the enclosure so I had to use the uh, four uh, mounting holes on the PCB. Using my drill press I drilled four holes 3mm in diameter required for mounting the PCB to the bottom of the enclosure. Next I also drilled the required holes for the side panel that holds the power switch. The DC power jack, the power LED and the line in jack. For the rocker switch slot I drilled a couple of bigger holes and then filed the remaining parts until I had the required slot size. This was fairly easy to do because the panel is made out of soft aluminium. A template for all of these holes will be provided in PDF format so check the description below for a link. For gluing the two standoffs for the speaker terminal panel I used some two-part epoxy. I carefully aligned the standoffs so that they fall right under the two holes of the panel and then I applied the epoxy around them and left it to dry for about one hour before attempting to apply any force on these standoffs. Next step was to solder all the required wires to their corresponding PCB pads. For the speaker output I used 24 AWG wires, for the power input I used 22 AWG and for the remaining connections I used some light wires something like 30 AWG since they don't carry any power. Extra care should be taken here to avoid making any mistake like reversing the polarity on some connection because you might regret that later. Before installing the PCB inside the enclosure I used a piece of 0.5mm thick thermal silicone pad on the bottom side of the PCB. This will help transfer the heat from the PCB to the aluminum enclosure and at the same time it will insulate the PCB electrically. I also installed a small heat sink on the main amplifier chip. I'm not sure if this is necessary or not but I think it's a nice addition and it can't do any harm. After inserting the PCB inside the enclosure and aligning it with the holes we drilled earlier I installed the four mounting screws that lock into the brass standoffs. These are not countersunk screws, I didn't have any but I will make sure to put a link to some countersunk screws in the description below. They will look nicer on the exterior of the enclosure. Before locking the side panels I used some heat shrink to insulate all the connections. Next it was a matter of inserting two screws for the speaker terminals. These lock into the brass standoffs we glued earlier and four screws for the other side panel. These are the original ones that came with the enclosure and lock into the enclosure itself. The finishing touch was to add some rubber feet on the bottom to prevent this amplifier from sliding around or from scratching any glossy surfaces that it might be placed on. To supply power to this amplifier I'm going to use this old universal laptop adapter that uh, can go up to 24 volts on the output and you need about uh, 3 amps uh, for this amplifier and most um, laptop power bricks can do that although uh, power, laptop power bricks are usually 18 or 19 volts but those will work just as well. I'm going to have to modify the cable on this one and uh, install a 2.5mm uh, DC jack or a 2.1mm DC jack. It all depends on the type of connector that you use on the amplifier. For testing the amplifier I'm going to start by connecting the speakers to the amplifier. I'm using these uh, desktop um, uh, speakers. Next I'm going to connect power from my bench power supply just for testing uh, purposes. Uh, it's set to 24 volts right now. We get an indication that the uh, power is on. And it, yeah, it tends to make that sound when you turn it on. And now if I search for new Bluetooth devices, 
I should find a device called the Sanwu Audio. After pairing with uh, this device and connecting to it, we should be able to play music through this uh, device. Let's check YouTube. Since I don't have any signal issues and the quality is nice, like I said, not audiophile great but certainly good enough for me and it can also go quite high in output power, certainly seems like enough power for these two desktop speakers that I have. By the way, this came from an old uh, Genius um, uh, 5.1 speaker system and uh, also I left the settings on the internal dip switch for uh, for the amplifier gain on the minimum setting so I didn't even need it to increase those but if you need more output power you could increase those by flipping both of those uh, dip switches on and that will give you the maximum gain that this amplifier has to offer I did a range test and I can play music without any interruptions from up to 2 or even 3 meters away with a line of sight between the amplifier and the device playing the music. I did however notice a decrease in signal when I try to connect or reconnect to the Bluetooth module. It does take longer for a connection to be established. This could be improved by replacing the uh, remaining uh, uh, side panel with a plastic one or by adding an external antenna. So you should do that on your build if you need the extra range. It should be a pretty robust amplifier. The TDA7492P has multiple protection features like uh, thermal protection. Uh, so if the junction temperature exceeds a certain threshold, I think uh, it's 145 degrees C, it will shut down itself for protection. It also has over voltage, under voltage and over current protection. So you're pretty much covered for what could go wrong with the amplifier. I'm pretty happy with how the project turned out. It's a nice compact Bluetooth uh, amplifier capable of delivering up to 25 watts for two speakers and that power is more than enough for my usage. There are also ready-made versions that you can purchase complete with uh, enclosure. Here is a picture of one. They're not very expensive and I'll post a link in the description for one of those if you'd like to get one ready-made but myself I like to make stuff and I hope you do too. As usual if you enjoyed the video it really helps a lot if you hit the like button and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that small bell icon to get a notification as soon as a new video is uploaded. If you use one of the links in the description to purchase something I will get a small percentage because those are affiliated links and this really helps keep the channel going. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.